How's it going guys? 10 tips and tricks to help you in random places in Blender. This is a really fun one. We're going a little bit more in depth with the tips, a little bit more process based stuff, but still fun, quick tips to really give you some ideas, problem solve, troubleshoot, and really have some fun in Blender. So without any more delays, let's get into them. So when I was working on this animation right here, I was noticing the patterns were duplicating on all my instances. So I had to figure out how to fix that. This is how you fix these repeating patterns of on your instance objects with your materials. So as you can see, it's happening right here and stretching and doing weird things. What you do is you go into your nodes with your object coordinate, and then select the large object, and now it's gonna stretch it across your entire scene as if it's one object. One of my favorite nodes in Geometry Nodes is the random value. So I have all these spheres, but I want them to be at different sizes. So go ahead and get a random value node, and I usually use float, but you can also use vector to do this. Plug the value into the scale, set your min and max, and now you have random sizing that you can also play with your seed to go ahead and play with it and do really cool things. Let me show you a very easy way to make a little bit more unique textures by combining patterns. So we have this pattern right here, which is a nice Voronoi with Chevy Chev. And we have your standard noise texture making something interesting. So what you can do is get a mix node set to color, plug them both into it, and then bring your factor to whatever degree you want. So now you have not only a Voronoi pattern, but some noise on top of it, giving it a much more detailed, interesting look. Now, this next tool is a shameless self-promotion. You are totally welcome to skip, but there is a discount for it at the end of this shout out if you want to grab it. And I'm talking about real-time materials. It is a add-on with 290 procedural materials you can apply to anything in one clip. It's meant to be as simple as possible. And these materials are very, very detailed, like the brand new leather materials. 10 really unique leather materials you can apply to anything with tons and tons of customization. I really love the cloth materials because you can do really interesting things like change the direction of the weave, change colors of specific directions of strand, a lot of cool stuff. The tile materials are awesome. The metal materials are awesome. I almost made this add-on just for me because I use it every single day. When I was working on these project files here, I'm quickly applying these materials. It gives you the power of procedural materials, but you don't have to spend the time making kind of a simple detail metal material it's already available to you throw it on there even if it's something you already know how to make being able to just throw it on there with one click move on it's really nice if you want to check that out linked in the description anybody watching this specific video use the code rtm25 at checkout on blender market get 25 percent off uh, let's move on to the next tool all right this one's fun and simple if you hit this button right here it will solo any object that you have uh, clicked and if you click it it will click it back so say i have this whole disc and i want to solo it now the disc is soloed, including the lighting. Lighting's gone, but that's okay. But you can solo anything very easy so you can just focus on that object. Say you're finished with a project, but you just wanna add some variation, maybe just get some new ideas. What I love to do in compositing is throw a hue saturation value node in there, and then I'll just go ahead and play with that hue, and you get new ideas on how to take your render to a different place, a different way of coloring. Maybe it's like, oh, I like green. Maybe I don't like that, make it red and green, things like that. And you can really come up with new and interesting ideas just with the hue saturation node gets you new ideas. Geometry Nodes has made making your own custom greebles so easy, it's crazy. Let me show you a very easy system to create your own custom greebles. What you can do is get a grid and just go ahead and subdivide that grid, throw an instance on points in there, get a cube as your instance object and plug that into instance, get a random value node and set that to vector and then plug value into scale. Then what I like to do is just bring them up a little bit to give you that more flat kind of classic greeble look. And then you can play with your seed and you can also stretch them out and do really cool things with your greebles. Here's a really simple hack for copying and pasting color very quickly. So I, so I wanna make this white more of that kind of teal look. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to this color, just hover over the color block, control C, click here, hover over the color block, control V, and it's gonna paste that color in. So you don't have to copy hex codes like I've been doing for the past five years. You can just simply do it just like that. You can use weight painting to actually dictate where things are extruded in your displacement modifier on any particular mesh. What I'm gonna do is just go ahead and get a plane and subdivide it pretty heavily. And then now you have this, go from object mode to weight paint. I'm gonna go ahead, right click and make my radius nice and big, and then literally just paint right down the middle. That has created a vertex group. Now go to your modifiers, add your displace, right here on vertex group, collect, select the group, and now you can see it working. I always end up inverting it and then new and go ahead and go and get whatever texture you want. And now you have created a path 
through these kind of hills right here, and then you can go ahead and mirror it, loop it, or do anything you want with it. This last one is gonna take a little longer, a little more intensive, but if you are into making looping animations like me, I figured out how you can loop your camera shake without any add-ons, anything extra. As you can see, this one's going through the scene. It is 120 frames long, and you can see the camera shake isn't glitching or stopping or doing anything weird at the beginning and the ending of the scene. Let me show you how to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear my keyframes. So now we have our camera going straight through here, and you can either you can either do it to all axes or just one. So I'm gonna pick the uh, up and down here. So all I'm gonna do is just add a keyframe. That's all you need to do. Head over here to the animation tab. And if you press play, you can see it's going through. And then right up here, you can click your X Euler rotation. And then in the modifiers right over here on the end tab, go and add in a noise modifier. That's gonna now make your, it's just gonna go berserk. I'm gonna hit the home button so I can find my keyframes right here. And right on here on my strength, I'm gonna give it say 0.3. So now it's just kind of weird like that. And on my scale, I'm going to stretch it out. I'm gonna give it six. So now that's stretched out, you can kind of see how that works. So now it's a little bit more manageable. It's a little bit extreme. So I'm gonna bring it down a little bit more. So now it's doing this, but here's the problem. It's not, see how it starts here? but it actually starts here. So it's not the same. It's not going to loop. If we go to here to the end, there's a subtle change where you can tell it's not looping. So here's how we fix that. I'm gonna go click on this here again. What you can do is go ahead right here, restrict frame range. And I'm gonna say, start the camera shake at frame number two. And since it's 120 frames, I'm gonna end at 118. So now you can see where it glitches off, right? Which that would kind of make the loop even worse. But here's what's nice is you can blend in and blend out. And the rule about looping is everything needs to start and stop at the exact same way. And you can see it phases out here and phases in here. So now if we just go ahead, go to the very end, you can see now it's not glitching in, glitching out. And you can make it a lot more subtle. Say, hey, make the start right there. So now you can see it's literally going straight into it. And then we can say, hey, let's go instead of um, 118, let's go to 119.2. And then you can make your out a little bit more dramatic if you want. So really hone it in. But regardless, now you can create looping animations with Camera Shake, much like the animation you're looking at right now. Um, it's awesome. It's cool. And these are all the tips. Thank you for watching. Again, if you want to get 25% off on real-time materials, use RTM25 at checkout, linked in the description. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.